Aww, yeah! It's time for another episode of the Comic Book Kaiju, a comic book discussion podcast. And on this episode, we have a very special treat because my co host from Treknological, a Star Trek shakedown, Captain Shoff, is here for a new, a brand new segment on the Comic Book Kaiju. Uh, we're going to try to do this as a recurring feature called Attack the Stack where we're looking at stuff that has kind of piled up. We're trying, you know, trying to check it off of our list of, you know what, let me hurry up and get to that so I can get on to my next things. Um, but this one's in particular is going to be a Halloween themed episode. So we're going to be talking all kind of spooky comics in this episode. But before we get to that, Captain Shaw, how are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, everyone check out the Technological Podcast. If you're into Star Trek or if you know someone who's into Star Trek, that is the show where you're going to want to check out Captain Schaff and myself, Captain Vactor, as we boldly go through all of the Star Trek content that's coming out right now, which is it's kind of like a golden age of Star Trek. But sure also, is. Schaff and I are busy dads. And we have a segment on there called Boldly Dadding, where we talk all about how, what it's like to be a dad in 2022 of young children. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. Shoff is doing an excellent job over there. So 100%, I want Thank you to you. go over there and check that out. Now, Shoff, you and I, being busy dads, yes, we need energy. We <laughs> need to have chasing our children around. Being attentive husbands, we need to be productive. So you and I have both been approached by a company called Magic Mind, mm -hmm. and I wanted to talk about it real quick on this episode of the Comic Book Kaiju. They're doing a 14-day challenge, uh, which they're trying to do a hashtag 14 days of magic. And what it is, they're for every 10,000 views of that hashtag 14 days of magic they're going to donate ten dollars their goal is to make as big an impact as possible and speed up the project's efforts by reaching thirty thousand dollars in donations for the amazon rainforest oh uh, wow yeah they're partnering all and uh, trying to save the rainforest which produces See, i didn't know that amazon prime had a rainforest <laughs> they <laughs> I think that's how they started, and then they kind of got away oh, from okay. the- okay, so they started with the rainforest, and yeah. then they moved to books, and yeah. then they moved to everything. That's right. I, I think <laughs> they're, uh, before they dominated the globe, they were just a small rainforest, but we're <laughs> trying to save that, Shaf, because uh, this is the source of more than 20% of the world's oxygen. So wow. Amazon rainforest, 100%, is something that we all want to save. But we, we definitely want to um, point you over to the link in our show notes, which is magicmind.co slash 14 days of magic. Check out that campaign. Very uh, important stuff that they're doing over there. And I also wanted to let everybody know that I'm starting this 14 day challenge to become my best self, Shaf. I want to be better for my family and for my co-host on my podcast shop. I want to be <laughs> a better Vactor. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of committing to this 14 day challenge. I'm going to be eating better. I'm going to be exercising more. And I'm also going to try to say more kind words to everyone around me. Shaf, you know what? Shaf, I appreciate you as a person and you as a co-host. I want to let you know that on this episode. Ooh, we I'm feeling the love tonight. <laughs> Can you feel the love tonight? So, yeah, like, um I have been drinking Magic Mind as well, the productivity drink, and it has been good. So, definitely check that out. Like I said, discount code is kaiju14. That's K A I J U 1 4, and we have a link in our show notes, magicmind.co/14daysofmagic. So, definitely check them out. All right, Shaw. Let us talk some spooky selections now marvel unlimited is fantastic as everyone who listens to this show should know but oh yeah 
they have a Halloween challenge and they have these challenges from time to time, which are kind of cool. They even give you these Marvel insider points. So right now, Shaf, I want to thank you for finding this challenge. This is um, something that's going to give you a thousand Marvel insider points if you complete it by October 31st. So uh, you only got a couple more days, but. I had a lot of fun going through all of these comics, Shaf. There was five total books. Um, and so we're just going to go one by one Sounds and good. talk about our thoughts. Um, yeah, so- this was really, really fun because the we'll talk about the, the titles, but I wouldn't have read really any of these, I don't think, otherwise. So I would have missed out on these. And I'm glad that the the challenge sort of forced me to to experience some books that I most likely would never have picked up. I'm the same way for the most part. I would have most likely the current books I probably would have um, been caught up on, but all of these older titles, I definitely would not have gone back and checked out. So the very first one on the list that is a link in our show notes, Werewolf by Night from 1972, the very first issue of Werewolf by Night Hey, Shaf, did you watch that uh, Werewolf by Night on Disney Plus? I did. I did. I really enjoyed it. It was nice. uh, it was very different um, for for the MCU, but it was it was fun too. And getting to see not just uh, Werewolf by Night, but also the uh, appearance of gosh, I don't want to spoil Elsa. things for people, but uh, uh, there, th- this is your warning, okay? This is your warning. <laughs> um, but Man Thing is in it, and yeah, uh, the big takeaway was just how interesting and fun and powerful that dude is um and so it was really cool to to witness that yeah so what did you think about werewolf by night number one from september 1st 1972 so uh, (laughs) (laughs) i didn't love it i didn't love it but that's only because i have a real tough time enjoying the like those the old ones from like the silver yes. age or the bronze right. age or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Like it's a challenging time for me to appreciate the comics from then. Cause the yes. writing is so different 100%. and there's so much dialogue. Like there's yeah. so much dialogue. Th- um, there's there's two ahead. things for me, the writing, like you said, and there's a lot of Stan Lee books that I've tried to get through. And it's just like, man, this dialogue, I love Stan Lee for creating the Marvel universe and most of the characters, but a lot of his dialogue is super corny, super like old school, the slang and the lingo from that time, but also just the writing style. The things storytelling is different in 2022 than it was in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. So I'm I'm right there with you. The, 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 the writing and then also the artwork and the biggest difference between that art and today's art is digital coloring. The coloring 100% makes it um it just changes the game on the artwork so yeah i'm right there with you chef i had um, a little bit of a tough time getting through this it's always interesting to see the characters origins and their first issues yeah yeah and and you know just like tv show pilots like you can't yes. always judge the show based off of the pilot episode because by the end of the show like let's say the show goes on for seven seasons the show in its seventh season is nothing like the show in the first season and it's always so much better towards the end because they've had the time to invest in character development yes you, you get to know them and you care about them and so it's a different story but meeting werewolf by night um for the first time there's so much narration in this mm. There's it rivals like Batman narration. If you, oh <laughs> like yeah, in my opinion. right. Um, and and the colors are so vibrant that it doesn't really scream spookiness to me. Mm. Like it's a little too vibrant to be scary. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. A hundred percent. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Shuff. Um, I I like seeing, like I said, the origin of the character, but I did not have fun overall on this issue. The next one was Werewolf by Night. Now, this is kind of the modern Werewolf by Night, 2020, the first issue of the new Werewolf by Night, Jake Gomez. So what did you think about this one? I like this one a lot more um, because it brought in sort of like the indigenous culture into it. And I think that that worked out better for the character, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Also, the character style of how they drew Werewolf by Night Mm -hmm. 
it, to me is a far more menacing looking character than what the um like this silver age of cinema like when we right. saw the werewolf movie like from like the old monster movies like it where it just looks like a guy with lots of facial hair yes right you know and and it just doesn't look scary correct this werewolf is menacing he's he's got the stature um, yeah and so i think like that works a lot more to serve the purpose of being like a primal force um and and in that respect i think it's a better um a better book and it actually by the end of it it, it it like went off the rails even more. There were like other monsters that he like ran mm, into and it yes. made me interested. I, I almost went on to the next issue of this run just to see what was happening, but I knew I had these other books to read. So I, I held off, but I wouldn't, it, I wouldn't put it past myself to go to like issue number two of this 2020 run and, uh, and see what I think. Nice. And this is actually written by taboo of the black eyed peas which I thought was interesting. Didn't know he was a writer, but I guess he's uh, got some many talents, but yeah, I was right there. Everything you said, I agree with a hundred percent. This came out during 2020 during the, uh, the pandemic. So that was kind of interesting reading the back. They had kind of a, like a letters page and they were talking about, Hey, you could have put your money into anything, but you put it into this. So thanks for doing that during a pandemic guys. Um, and Ease up on the toilet paper, you know, <laughs> stop using it. So I thought it was very interesting also that it takes place, like you said, the indigenous aspect of it in a small town in Arizona. Yeah. Where I currently yeah. live. Um, and you used to live. That's but true. I thought was, that part was very interesting, but also relatable because I live here. So that one, I also would probably continue with it um, just to see more of the werewolf by night. Where, where he's at currently, because uh, I'm not 100% sure the whole mystical uh, supernatural side of the Marvel Universe. I don't really read that much. So Morbius, um, Elsa Bloodstone, you know, I, I'm not really following them. But I did notice the uh, Moon Knight annual book just came out this week. And on the cover, it said Werewolf by Night is in this book. So that would probably be my only supernatural book that I'm reading is Moon Knight. So that might be where I continue to catch up with the werewolf by night. All right. Next up, Shoff. I think this is probably my favorite of the, the selections that we've read. Legion of Monsters, number one from 2011. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this one? Dude, I totally agree with you. I'm 100% there. I've, I had so much fun with this one. And it kind of bummed me out when I recognized that it's a limited series of mm -hmm. only four issues. Yeah. Like that to me, I didn't read the rest of them, but I want to, and I intend to, Yeah, uh, because this one was the most fun. Uh, you have Elsa Bloodstone, and this is actually the first comic that I've read of her that she's in. Yes, uh, I, I don't know much about her as a character. I know she's, she was in werewolf by night, the uh, MCU special presentation. Yes. And she was great in that uh, too. And, and I was like, Oh, this character's fun. She's spunky. She's, she's uh, strong. She's independent. Like she's, she's cool. And, and she's got kind of a, an attitude, you know, she's like very, um, I, mean, I guess spunky is probably the best word, but yeah. uh, she's got a lot of like, uh, talking smack and stuff. And, and, <laughs> uh, and it's just a lot of fun. And I didn't think I would enjoy any comic book that has Morbius in it, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but, um, it's, it's a comedy. This thing is like totally written like a comedy. So you've got Morbius, you've got Manphibian, you've got, um, uh, some like mummy dude, yeah, the living mummy. Yeah. Living mummy. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's just a lot of fun stuff. And these, all these monsters live under New York. I think, right? Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah. And and then um they basically work together to like to like solve crimes and stuff. Like, <laughs> and I was just like, this is so fun. And the fact that Elsa Bloodstone being like a monster hunter, yeah, um, is teaming up with the Legion of Monsters to catch the big bad. Um, I, I just I was like, this is fun. I want to read yeah. the rest of this. It gave me very uh, uh very much Hellboy vibes like that. Oh yeah, department totally. of supernatural you know, coming together to take down monsters and no surprise Shaw, This was written by Kieran Gillen, who is one of the best writers currently at Marvel. He's, he actually just finished the 
X, Avengers, uh, X Men, Eternals, Judgment Day uh, crossover that's that's going on. He's big time writer on Eternals, on X Men, um, just a a ton of great stuff by Kieran Gillen. So it also does not surprise me when I when I found out that he was the writer of this Legion of Monsters. So yeah, highly recommend Legion of Monsters number one. Yeah, very good stuff. Next up, Shoff, Death of Doctor Strange, Bloodstone, number one. Now, this was actually a tie-in to that Death of Doctor Strange miniseries that uh, was going on right around the time that the the multi- Multiverse of Madness was coming out. So this was leading up to that, Doctor Strange died. And so it was kind of, all right, how does the Marvel Universe you know, react after he's dead? This... Bloodstone was a tie into that, and it's all about Elsa and the family Bloodstone. Um, so this was probably your second Elsa Bloodstone comic, right? Uh, yes, this is my second. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my <laughs> daughter just ran into my room, and I thought she was going to bed, so that's a surprise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the second of the Elsa Bloodstone comics that I've read, and honestly, I did not like this at all Mm. um this was not a fun comic to read this was a challenge to get through um artistically it's got great art but i just it just didn't work for me uh yeah the character didn't interest me at all and after reading the other one that had her in it that was the far more interesting title so that's just me yeah i i have to agree this one um it didn't capture my attention necessarily i was enjoying it as a tie-in to death of Dr. Strange, because whenever I'm reading a crossover, I have this kind of OCD thing or this, um, I have to read everything, you know, that's tied into that thing. So knowing what was going on at the same time as the crossover or the, um, the big story is kind of interesting. So on that level, I was like, Oh, okay. This was the Elsa and her family. What was going on there? But like you said, I wasn't that interested and it's a one shot. There's, this wasn't a continuation, you know, continuing series didn't go anywhere after this. So when I was done reading it, I was like, all right, I I guess that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And and to introduce these other characters like Lyra and Cullen, Mm -hmm. Cullen was interesting to me because of like this demon that has attached himself to Cullen and Mm -hmm. like he becomes, Oh gosh, what was the name of it? Uh, Glartrox, yeah. <laughs> I think is the name of the demon. Yeah, that's right. Um, like that part was kind of cool and kind of interesting, especially how he visually looked. But I, I don't know. I just felt like this whole story kind of fell flat to me. But that's just mm-hmm. me. Yeah. And it was something that I don't know if they've continued it anywhere else. Um, oh, okay. Because she doesn't, as far as I know, she doesn't have any. Uh, and this just recently came out in January of this year. So... I don't know of any other titles where Elsa's running around. Um, maybe if the listeners know, let us know. Uh, now, the last book on the list, Shoff, was Ghost Rider number 28 from 1990. Now, this was the first chapter of the Rise of the Midnight Suns event. And we've got that Midnight Suns video game coming out later this year. So what did you think about this 1990 book? So... I love Ghost Rider as as a character. And I think like if you're approaching it from the standpoint of this is like uh, it was added, included in the Halloween listing of spooky titles. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can get scarier than Ghost Rider because mm. Ghost Rider, when he becomes the spirit of vengeance, he ha- exists for one purpose, and that's to find evil and snuff it out, you know, like, yeah, um, and, and it. There's really no, like whether or not you've killed someone or stolen a pack of gum, like it's, (laughs) it's, you know, it's all bad. So like, he's going to be after you for anything. And I think about that and you think about people nowadays, if Ghost Rider was like a real person and he (laughs) was like taking everybody, he'd be killing everyone. Everyone would get the penance (laughs) stare because we all have like that dark side. Right. And that's what, that's what the, the spirit of vengeance like feeds on is that dark side. Um, yeah. so I, I think like as a character, like he's intriguing and, but I prefer Johnny blaze over Danny catch. And mm. the fact that 
this is a Danny Ketch story already made it something I wasn't like in love with. Right. Cosmic Ghost Rider is my absolute favorite. Frank yeah. Castle all the way. Um, actually, <laughs> crazy, crazy Frank Castle. <laughs> um, but I also found this one really hard to follow. Yes. This yep. issue, I don't know what it was about it. Part of me thought I was just reading it too late in the night and maybe I was having trouble focusing, but this was a really hard one to read because it just felt so all over the place and not yeah. written well. I don't, right. I, I'm having trouble kind of like figuring out why, but it just didn't work. Yeah. See the problem for me on this one and uh, 1990 was when the series started, but this was issue 28. So it was actually 1992 as it was published. But the problem for me is it felt like, Oh, I need to read 27 other issues of Ghost Rider to know what's going on. Just like you said, it's not Johnny blaze. It's Danny catch. And you have to know these things going into it. Like, why is he, why is, you know, why is there two of them? Why? Like, so it just felt like I was jumping into the middle of the story and I needed more backup information. So that's where I felt. I was like, man, I don't know what's going on in this storyline right now. And then also again, like we said with the original werewolf by night, the, the way that comics were written in the nineties is different than how comics are written in 2022. This literally was 20 years ago that this book came out. So for me, the nineties of it was a little bit hard to get through as well. I was like, Ooh, this is not what I'm used to now. I'm my current books that I'm reading. I'm not used to this 1992 style dialogue. Also the art still was not digital, but so Andy uh, Kubert is actually one of my one of my favorite artists. I love, I love his stuff. Uh, but going back and looking at this and there's no digital coloring, I was like, Ooh, this is also another one that I want, uh, I want updated. <laughs> I want enhanced, but yeah. Now, yeah. are we in agreement that the, the long haired dude is Johnny blaze? The one that was like in a trench coat and he was falling yeah. around. Yes, that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've yes. just never seen Johnny because I, I don't remember the, I, don't, I wasn't really reading a uh, ghost Rider at this time. Same. So Same. I'm like seeing him with this long, like Fabio hair. I'm like, <laughs> is this Johnny blaze? Like they never right. actually call him by name. I don't think, but he certainly has, um, he has the, the outfit on underneath, which is definitely the ghost Rider yeah. outfit with like, sort of like the, the leather and the square in, mm. in white. So, um, so I, I had a feeling, but I was like, I don't know. And there are a lot of writers, so yeah. it's hard to keep track of all of them sometimes. Yeah. I was the same way. Cause I was not a, a huge ghost Rider fan in this time period. I was all Spider-Man in 1992. So I wasn't reading Johnny blaze stuff and I only knew him as ghost Rider, So I only know him as a flaming skull. I didn't know what he looked like with a human face. So I was also kind of taken off guard by that one, but I felt like if I had been reading all those other 27 issues of Ghost Rider, I definitely would have been, I would have felt more at home, more at ease. Yeah. But now, yeah, this one did not work for me, Shelf. Wow. See, I'm, we're totally in agreement this whole way around. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I want to say this, like of the listing, this is not really a very spooky list, right? Like, yeah, it was billed as a spooky list and it's not very spooky. Mm -hmm. If they really wanted to go for something spooky, I want to offer up one for the listeners Ooh. That if they haven't read this, they need to because it's legit disturbing and spooky. And that would be Sandman. Ooh, yeah. Volume. I'm on volume one. I'm only, I'm like, uh, maybe 90% through of it, through mm -hmm. it. Um, and, and there's a lot of issues in volume one, but it's called Preludes and Nocturnes. Yeah. And I'm specifically reading it on Comixology on their 30th anniversary edition. Yes. It is some crazy stuff goes down and it's very disturbing and f definitely like the way things are, are, are drawn. It's creepy. The creep factor is, is to the max. So I, I would offer up this as a much spookier title. I know it's not Marvel. Um, it's technically a DC property, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, spooky for sure. Yeah. I agree with that a hundred percent. And I will throw in the books of James Tynan the Fourth. Uh, he's currently writing "Something Is Killing the Children," "The Nice House on the Lake," and Ooh. "House of Slaughter." All of those books, actually, even "Department of Truth," 
all of those books are yes. actual like horror books of these these are terrifying things that are happening to people so a hundred percent james tynan the fourth is writing some great spooky selections or department of truth man that is pretty scary stuff and the way that the the art in that i can't read like i have to be in the right mindset to to Mm -hmm. read department of truth because it's a very it's very disturbing art yes to, to look at and i don't want it getting like etched into my brain to the where I'm right. just thinking about it all the time. <laughs> and department of truth is one of those comics that makes you think about it long yeah. after you've read it. A hundred percent. Excellent. Shoff. Well, I think that was a very good episode of our attack the stack, Thank which you. is like I said, going to be a recurring segment on the comic book Kaiju. Um, whenever Shoff wants to come back and tell us uh, what books he's been reading, and what's been piling up on his stack, I'm going to join him and throw in the books that have been piling up on my stack. Uh, but yeah, Shaf, thank you very much for joining me. And definitely, listeners, check out the Technological Podcast, where Shaf and I are talking all about Star Trek Prodigy, Star Trek Lower Decks, and anything else that's coming out in the Star Trek universe. Uh, Shaf, thank you very much again for joining me, sir. Thank you for having me, and and definitely, I hope you're enjoying. Uh, our listeners are enjoying uh, um, comic book kaiju yeah. and technological and and everything else that Vector in the Vector verse is happening because <laughs> um, he, he's an exceptional guy, a great dad, uh, and uh, and a stand up friend. So, thank you, glad Shaw. to be here. Yeah, well, Captain Shaw loves comics, and you should too. Woo!